Heavenly Father, I thank you for your presence in this room, Lord. And I thank you for everyone that participates and comes here, Lord. And travel mercies for those that are all around the U.S., Lord. I just pray for this group, our class, our church, Lord, the healing of our families, spiritually, physically, and whatever other way that they need to be healed, Lord, financially, too. And uh, just bless our speakers, Byron, and whoever else comes up to speak this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And with that, I'm going to ask Tom, please. Yes. Yeah. To have to say something. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dueling microphones. Yeah. And as a, well, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> as, as you know, everybody has been supportive as you've watched uh, our company go through the progress. I wanted to let you know that we have a pre SEC offering for investors already. Some people have already invested. We're very excited. But it's only going to last about two weeks. But if you're very interested, it's about an 81% discount on the stocks. Please, please come and see me uh, at the end. A very simple process. Thank you. Mark, 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 Mark. Mark. Oh, Mark. By the way, Mark has some incredible product, as we've all tasted. But now, <laughs> now he's going to be able to offer it to everybody. I think you've got a, like a three- a three for PS3201, the website, uh, I have business cards. And the website is what? Is up and available. And what's it called? I love this sauce. I love, love this sauce. Yay! Thanks, everybody. Have a great morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Mary. Good morning, 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 Right, PowerPoint or no PowerPoint, but I'm happy to be here and fired up. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. Every time we come up here, there's something going on. And, uh, I was at an event, family event, believe it or not, on the 6th of this month. And uh, I was talking with a young man, 37. I've known him about 20 years, a small business owner. He installs glass, right, on auto, automobiles and stuff like that. And uh, so that was May 5th. May 6th, a Saturday, and by May, May 13th, one week later, passed away. Oh, wow. Right? Mm -hmm. Why? Passed away. Uh, they found him uh, near Coachella Valley, you know, Coachella Ted, yeah. mm -hmm. in, in, the, uh, in the canal, in the water, right? Wow. And so, uh, family member, he's married to my wife's uh, niece. Mm -hmm. So, we drove out there yesterday. It's a good time with the family, but uh, it just shows the fragility of life. Yeah. That's right. Right. And so in my business and you, your business as well, you know, we're all entrepreneurs, you gotta think about, you know, just planning it, planning ahead and having everything in place that you need. So here I am, that's me up there. We're gonna get a little get into a little bit of business talk today. And we want to talk about some succession strategies and keeping some key employees around if you think about that. So these are some of the, the big four we're gonna talk about today. Obviously, we're talking about key person, buy sell agreements. Executive bonuses, and then get your estate affairs in order as well. And so we, we talk about protecting your money machine, right? All of our businesses have key people. How many people in here are actually the key person for your particular business? Wow, wow. Okay. Overhead, I'd say about sixty percent, right? So then for the other forty, maybe we hire folks to bring on board our teams and, and into our businesses. The main thing you got to think about is the key person on the value, right? They know what they bring to the table, right? And so your competition, somehow this about that, is always looking to uh, siphon off your talent, right? They look at a siphon off your talent. And so that's one of the big turnovers we have in our, in our, in our country. They say it affects about, it's about a $1 trillion problem in, Whoa. in businesses, right? Whoa. Losing people. $1 trillion, right? Yeah. It's happened to me. It's happened to you. <laughs> It's happened to me before, right? And so uh, we've got to incentivize your partners or your key employees and then uh, get commitments from individuals to solutions, right? From individual, individualized solutions. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. I apologize for the typo. But one thing we teach people to do when you're talking about key employee insurance, obviously we go for what we call term insurance, right? 
you're setting up your business, you don't want to spend a lot of money, you run a low overhead. The term that's out there in the street, and this is, you got USA Today talking about Transamerica's term. It is happening to be the home team, right? But it is what it is, right? Last year, it was Forbes. Best overall term. And the reason for this, guys, you got to think about it. When you're incentivizing people, you don't just want to give them a low-cost term or just cover your business, just to, you know what I mean? Things happen, right? Life happens. Health changes, right? Yes. So this particular term product, and I brought some brochures on the table in the back, it takes care of your family. It takes care of your health, right? You become critically ill, chronically ill, terminally ill, right? This particular term product that you can use in your business will accelerate 24% of that death benefit immediately, right? If you become chronic or critically ill. It goes up to 90% for chronic or critically ill, right? And then obviously, if you you become terminally ill, meaning the doctor says you got 12 months or less to live, 100% of that death benefit and accelerates. What could you do for your business if, oh. if the death benefit accelerated like that? Not How would it help your business? Would it help a lot? Could you find somebody to take your place and keep that business going? Things like that. And so it's important to know this is this, right? So this is not me talking, it's out, it's out in social media. Buy sell agreements. This is where, you know, a lot of times business partners really don't want to have this conversation, but it's crucial, right? It's all about dividing and cutting up the pie, right? Do we have our buy-sell agreements in place? Do we have our buy-sell agreements in place, right? Uh, the main thing you got to think about is, and we talked about this months ago, right? Like the Dale Earnhardt stories, right? You got this, if you, anybody know the Chargers, right? That family's always in court battling about you know, moving the company and getting rid of the company and doing this and why do we move and all that kind of stuff. But it goes on and on and on. Courthouses are filled with business partners who finally came to some disagreements. Um, one of my agents that, that has, has a client out in Hawaii is two brothers, believe it or not, right? Two brothers. And one of the brothers wanted to open another facility. And the other brother said, that's not the way we agreed in the beginning. Now they're in court. See what uh -huh. I mean? And so... These are things that you got to think about as you're setting up your business. Preferably, you do it in the beginning of your business as you're establishing it. Typically, if you sit with a business attorney, they're going to tell you to get your buy sell agreement in place, right? But that's something we usually put on the back burner, right? And it'll take your business down, right? And so uh, let's talk about recruiting and rewarding and retaining people, right? We call this the triple play, how to incentivize. And so the first play, uh, the first play is you uh, talk about income replacement, right? So in this example, we put some income protection on a family, right? For up to 25 years, in case your key employee passes away. The potential for cash value accumulation, right? These are found in all type of permanent life uh, policies. We particularly talk about the index universal life. You see it in Forbes magazine nowadays. They're talking about it a lot more. And uh, it comes with a bunch of benefits, right? A bunch of benefits that you won't find any other solution out there, right? And then obviously long-term care, that's a pretty big incentive for um, employees nowadays because nobody wants to pay for it, right? So you can incentivize, you can attract new talent with long-term care, believe it or not. And so we're teaching this to uh, employers and, and business owners because of all these tax advantages that they have in place, right? Um, the main thing is, is write-offs, write-offs, right? Your business can fund the IUL and then you're doing write-offs with some taxes, right? And so that leads me to another topic. We talk about executive bonuses. A lot of folks think that the executive bonuses is only for the folks downtown in Manhattan, right? <laughs> Doesn't work like that. Congress writes tax codes for all of us, everybody in the room, right? You just have to know how to access the, the, the plans. And so what's the benefit for you right? if you're running a business, right? It distinguishes as a compensation package, right? It provides selected employees, attractive pre and post retirement benefits, right? Um, you receive an income tax deduction. It's key, right? And then maintain a plan that's easy to administer. So we reduce a lot of the administrative uh, overhead, right? With an IUL, there's not a lot going on. 
it's a non-qualified plan. It's a non-qualified plan, so you've got a lot less administration, right? And then for the executive, they enjoy the tax deferred growth of a life insurance policy with a cash value, right? Uh, provides income tax free debt benefit obviously for their beneficiaries, right? For looking out for the families. And then the, uh, they own the policy. They have access to it, right? And then they can save more for retirement because these things are not really limited, right? Your, your 401k, you can put in so much, right? Roth IRA, you can put in so much. When it comes to cash value life insurance policy, you can put in as much as you want. Anybody been following what's going on in Silicon Valley, right? And, and the rest of the banks, they don't know about this stuff. A lot of these investors, especially Florida National, don't really know what they don't know, right? And so you can put as much as you want, but you have to set it up in the beginning, right? You set it up when you first establish your plan, right? And so no limit. There's no limit. It's based on how you set it up. Yes, sir. Sorry. Question. You're saying that the IUF, which banks will not talk about, they don't talk about. You're saying that would have protect those shareholders who made deposits of up to hundred fifty thousand in the bank. Absolutely. 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 So put a million dollars, two million dollars, protect it. It doesn't matter. As long as when you set up your IUL, it doesn't matter. Whole life IUL doesn't matter. Permanent life policy. Only time you'll lose money is if you have a VUL. That's called a VUL, variable, right? Variable universal life. So those don't have any protection. Your principal is not protected. But in, in index universal life, you have a floor on your money at all times, guaranteed floor. Could you go over that again, Byron? Slow to this point, you're going to have my second. Ah, yeah, I love it. But uh, so in the industry, so if, you, if I go back to poster, right, it was on Forbes, you've seen it on Forbes, and I think some of my previous presentation, I talked about the GE executives. Do you guys remember that poster? Yeah. Right, and it shows GE executives, General Electric executives doing 400,000, right, 493,000 a year into their policies. But what it is is permanent life insurance using tax code 7702. 7702 subsection A has benefits, right? That only come through life insurance contracts, period, right? And so you can set these things up if you qualify because it's tied to your life, your health, right? Your age, your income, if you will, um, at any limits, right? So if you need 30 million, you call me, we're on the phone with Pacific Life. I'm serious, right? That's just how it works. Um, there's no limits. It's unlimited. You got to think about, for example, these folks who are into uh, massive construction projects, right? 100, 100, 100 story building. They've got to go out and get some big time key employees. Big time. Because they're coming out of a lot, millions and millions of dollars to front load building a big skyscraper and stuff like that. They need help protecting their family, number one, because they're putting a lot of money out, right, on a project. But two, they must have tax advantages to right? leverage. So you leverage on you. We're talking about annuities. No, that's a totally different lane. So annuities has nothing to do with really life. Annuities is insurance on money, right? So IULs is talking about your life. That's the little you got to, most cases you got to do lab, urine, right? They got to check you out. Make sure you're you qualify or she don't qualify. So I kind of put it in a category, if you think about mortgages, for example, a lot of folks have good jobs, but they can't qualify for a mortgage, right? It's the same thing with these insurance products. You may have a great job, you may have great income, you may have a great business, but if your health isn't, isn't on point, you're not gonna get a policy, right? So for example, in the last two to three months, I've had two veterans, right? I'm a veteran, they're a veteran, they apply, they die, right? He died. One was uh, mainly tied to P uh, PTSD, and the other one was uh, liver enzymes. Liver enzymes spike too high, right? So you have to think about celebrities that have had liver trouble and they end up passing away, right? One of the things that I was reminded of by a friend of mine who also has insurance is that if you have young children, or maybe you've got a son or daughter that has young children, now is the time to get them a policy. Because, you know, 
there's a good chance they don't have a heart condition or diabetes or anything else, but you set them up literally for the rest of their life if you do it real early. And obviously, premiums will lower. 100% agree with that. I, I, I'm a definitely advocate for that. When I do my normal presentation, I show a picture of my three of my family members, right? Uh, three year old granddaughter at the time, she's five now. Praise God. Yeah, 28 year old uh, son, he's you know 31 now, and then a 13 year old nephew, all of them with type 1 diabetes. And only one was covered because of me, my granddaughter, right? My son, he's already in his 30s, so I didn't know back then. But I covered my granddaughter on the spot. Oh, right on. I did that, right? Absolutely. In qualifying uh, for a policy, I assume you're talking whole life. Is term life, would that be easier to qualify for? Believe it or not, no. Term life typically is, uh, they ask a lot more questions because you're paying nothing for the policy. And so I, 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 we say this all the time, because you need to know. If, if, and I'm gonna give an example and then I'm gonna back it up. So for example, if, if I sold chairs, these were my chairs and I sold them every day. Let's just say these are 100 chairs. And only two of my clients came to pick up the chairs when you ever stopped selling them. No, right? That's about, the, that's about the, how, how, how much the term pays out. Right, because people change their job, they miss a premium. You miss a premium, you have to mature. Right, right. So there's a high turnover of a turn. So they ask a lot of questions because you get it on the cheap. Right, and so whole life, for example, is different from uh, index universal life. So whole life comes with a cap, if you will, and the cap may be four percent, maybe six percent, but that's the most you will ever earn in a whole life is a six percent. But didn't you say that term life usually never pays out? Very seldom, right? I believe you told me that. I did say that. And so, so why would qualifying be harder for term than the self and pay Because you're paying pennies on the dollar. Say you need a million dollar a policy right. and you're 18 years old today, for example. It's like 13 bucks a month, yeah. right? But if you're in your 50s or 60s, obviously you're going to pay more, yeah. right? Right. But um, they ask a lot of questions. And so I pay 45 a month. Yeah, if, if you're getting a term, say say a term, not the one that's on this forms in USA Today, not that one, but that has living benefits, so it will pay out, right? If you become critically ill, chronically ill, stuff like that. But if you're uh, if you're just getting a basic term, they're going to ask some questions, like a lot of questions, right? But uh, a lot of people do qualify for it. They push them out, right? Call the eight hundred number. Hey, we got you. We got you. We got you. Right. Because you miss one payment, you're, you're done, right? You got to start all over. Typically, they're not really going to work with you, right? You got to reset. And so that's a, that's a very good nugget to it for the children. I definitely recommend it. Even if you start with a Gerber life, right? You do Gerber. Um, Everest. Everest is a whole life policy. But at least your child, as they grow up, they're building cash value, and then they can't be denied if a pre-existing condition happens to a child, right? Big deal. So we talk about the EVs, right? Executive bonuses, right? Uh, why are these kind of attractive? Because companies want to recruit and retrain employees, right? They want to retain these employees. Companies want to offer benefits in excess of the qualified plan. So something outside of the norm, right? Something outside of the norm. And then companies that want to offer uh, the benefits to a select group of employees. So don't forget about yourself. As you're planning for your business, don't put you on the back burner. You know, Let's ask our clients, are you paying yourself first? Are you paying yourself first? Are you putting all the money in a, in, in a bucket and sliding it underneath, you know, the counter? That's not the way to go, right? Build some, uh, some benefits for yourself. And so one of the last things I want to talk about is we talk about a state plan. When it's all said and done, how are you going to pass on your business? What are you going to do for your business to make sure it succeeds you and stuff like that? I'm going to give you two examples. One is a client I'm working with right now. So we got on the phone with our same attorney firm. And this client is it's kind of complicated. But, you know, they're looking at selling the business, right? There's no trust in place at all whatsoever. But she doesn't have a, a spouse, no children, right? Um, and then there's other loose ends tied up with her family with other properties. And so we're putting the whole package together, including um trying to help her figure out how she's going to sell her business, if she wants to sell it, right? Right now, she wants to sell it because she's about 66. 
that she's a little tired, right? It's getting to be exhausted, the type of business she runs. And then another one, this bottom one is huge. This bottom one is huge. This is a real actual client. One of my teammates, they met with a client who has a multi-million dollar business. And they had already sat in front of three different wealth providers. And when they got done speaking with all these uh, wealth advisors, the, the suggestion was to just pay the taxes. You know, when you sell that business, they have a, uh, about two to three hundred million dollar taxes in them now, right? Million with a million. But they got on the line with our state attorneys and they started talking about trust and the different types of trust, right? And the different, there's a lot of different types of trust out there where you can package these things and avoid a lot of taxes. And that is a big deal. And so the main thing is, if you guys need to sit in front of a state attorney, stuff like that, I can get on demand with them pretty much any weekday from eight to four, literally. Like if you call me and say, hey, let's let's get jump on with an estate attorney, I can do that long as I'm not already in an appointment. But that's something I want you guys to know. Um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. We find often that most people don't have these trust in place, not just businesses, but just in life. And um, we like to say, if you don't make a decision, the court's going to make the decision for you, right? And you don't want that. <laughs> Somebody said, well, there he is. You don't want that. Nothing yeah, about that. Yeah. One of the things that if you own a house, you really need to do with the truck. I, uh, I ran a vet clinic for years, and I'm in Jag, uh, so my, my DFW, people are getting older. And I always get these panic phone calls where the, the house is in the title of the parents. The parents died, and the sons are living in the house, or they don't know what to do because now you have to go through COVID. And they're going to go tax on COVID. Yeah. And so people just don't say, you know, I beg it, but just get a living trust so you don't have to deal with it. And you know how this trick is, you know, until the course it happens, and then it's after the fact. It's very hard to jury once the person died. And the title problem, the title is in the dead village. You transcript that go through probate. I mean, I I I talk to them blue in the face. If you own a house and you want to leave it, you want to get a living trust. Then it's important. I mean, you, you have to write out the part. And um, a lot of folks don't do it because they look at the cost. Honestly, they don't want to cut a check with you know two thousand, three thousand, whatever it is. And um, go ahead, sir. Byron, um, you know we. We always hear this pitch, whole life versus term, you know, like like Mark was just pointing out there, you know, and and, and uh, we sit down with a wealth advisor, you know, to talk about, you know, what doesn't go directly to that policy, okay? What sort of diversifications are we going to be able to look at? And how does that compare, you know, to just going to a wealth advisor that does nothing but that, you know, portfolio only? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a matter of, I, I tell people, to, you know, you should shop around, right? So, for example, some wealth advisors don't have what we call, what I have, it's a life insurance, life, right? So, if you don't have a life insurance license, you have to look at it like a hospital. When you go to a hospital, depending on what you need, you're going to see a certain person, right? And that certain person has a specialty to help you, and everybody doesn't have that, right? They may have access to you. Um, Different products and different solutions, but they don't have what you need. So you need to go through that door instead of that door, right? And get what you need. Uh, when it comes to term and whole life, there's there's multiple types of policies. So on the permanent side of the fence, you have four, right? So you got whole life being the oldest, you've been around a long time, whole life. Then you have universal life, right? The king after whole life. And then you have VUL, which is variable universal life. So people want more gains. They want more risk. They're actually taking risk, right, to get more uh, return. But then you have another pool, no protection of your money, right? And then there's index universal life, which is the latest and greatest last year, and it puts protection on your principal, but you don't give up the potential gains in the market, right? What there's a cap. What was that last one you mentioned? You don't give up the potential gains. So index means you have a floor that's protection of your principal at all times, right? And so you get some of the market return. You don't get like V well, like 20%, 25%, 40%. You may have a cap of 15, but you never have a negative, right? And so that's the beauty of the index. And so it's a matter of asking the right questions and 
finding the value, right? If you go to pay money, if it's going to cost you, make sure you get the value. Honestly, one more question. Um, how would you define to you can basically we'd have to sit down with you, right? And we would put you with one of our business advisors that talk non profit specifically, right? That will look at your books, look at your book of business and stuff like that, and it'll work out something for you. Yeah. And then I have one more slide I want to show you guys. I got something special going on here. Antoine, can I pull that up? Can you have the other piece? Something big going on. This is Military Appreciation Month, right? And uh, we've got a lot of better events going on this month, as well as uh, just nationally, right? Memorial Day is coming up. This event I have going on Tuesday night. It's happening this Tuesday night. Um, got a rear admiral that's going to be speaking to my, some of my agents on the team, sending them off. They're having their veteran grand openings online. Some of these folks are uh, on the East Coast, and some are here. You guys know Janelle. Sometimes yes. she's here, she comes in. She just got life here recently, but uh, is this a Zoom event? It is it's a Zoom event. Yeah. Okay. We've got uh, we call him uh, Poncho up there at the top. He was a uh, H sixty helicopter pilot. Met him at the. Uh, Helicopter wing actually on North Island. So he's on the team now. We got Kareem Bradley, uh, a naval officer. He's his last day in the military was May 31st. And then we got Robert Wooden, a retired Navy senior chief. He's in Florida as well, uh, on the team. And we also have Gerald Carter on the right down there. He's a retired, he's a fuels guy in the Navy, ABF one. So I'll be lunching these five guys in business uh, Tuesday night. And so definitely you guys are welcome to attend. Anybody want to leave, I can definitely um, text a few you send it to you. But uh, we're going to send these guys off and uh, the business is going so. Any right. more questions? Any more questions? Thank you. No, I think okay. we're good. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope that we really learned something today. I, I used to be a market agent, you know, so I buy my nose at with another source. And there's a lot of data and information that's always moving. So you got to ask questions, you got to stay on top of the terminology. Uh, and I'll just tell you, uh, it's, it's everything's changing. Tax codes are changing. And I just think we just always have to stay on top of things. Um, next week, we're going to have Chad from KPR. Hey, and invite your friends to come to Zoom. If you have any ideas for new speakers, we're always looking for new speakers. And I appreciate everybody's um, uh, time here. Does anybody want to add anything before we close? Okay. There's a. Uh... The, uh, tell us about your book. <laughs> actually, actually, the feedback is actually terrific. Uh, people that read it, they're they're actually enthralled by it, and they say, "I I, I didn't know that it, you know that that even existed." I have some business cards at back for the book. There's a QR code. Uh, read it. I really do need some reviews. Uh, I need. I'm looking to about a hundred reviews it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Amazon. Just so you know, we're we're beta testing book two. Uh, it's actually really exciting because people are reading book two and they say, "Hey, I like it. That's all I want to hear. It's a good read. It's fun to read. It's stuff you don't see in the traditional history." Okay. I don't know why. It's an untold story. You know, the set varied by the sands of time. What a story, folks! I'm telling you, what a story. You can't make it up. So it's it's fun, um, you know. It's the women that conquer the world. Okay, so you don't need the new new generation. They've been doing it for a long time. Thank you. I just went to a big purchase of meeting last yesterday this weekend. Two hundred plus women, powerful speakers. I'm just like a little mini mouse, but I'll tell you, it's good to be around positive, informative business 
professional people. And I'll tell you, even at the women's club, they mentioned John Maxwell's book. And I was like, oh, that used to be my pastor. So of course, I was really happy that John Maxwell's all around the circuit. All right, let's go. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the time for um, our group here, Lord, the things that we learn, the knowledge that's increased, Lord. I pray it's used in, uh, for your purpose and your presence in our lives, and each one of our families are blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.